Well, today is a big day in the course of the Ukraine-Russia war, or Russo-Ukrainian war, whatever you want to call it, uh, because back in, what was it, 2014, Crimea held its referendum to join the Russian Federation, and ever since then, the Ruskies uh, have planted their flag down there in Crimea and have made it clear that they're never going to let it, uh, you know, rejoin, uh, you know, any sort of Ukrainian state ever again. It's part of Russia, just like it used to be, and then it was part of Ukraine uh, during the uh, post-Soviet uh, period for a while. Well, now the Ruskies, it seems, are going to take back uh, some more of Ukraine officially. Yes, they've been fighting in Ukraine, and we've been expecting that, you know, oh yeah, this is about... Russia, you know, expanding its borders. Um, that has, you know, not exactly been a secret during this war, but they hadn't done it officially. They, they were invading under the pretense that they were defending the independence of uh, the Donbass republics. Well, now those two Donbass republics, as well as Zaporozhia and uh, Kherson, which I believe is how you say that, are going to hell, hold a referenda which is the plural of referendum, <laughs> between uh, t September 23rd and the 27th. So what is that, like over the weekend? And this referendum, which will be held in each uh, of the oblasts, each of the four, uh, will determine whether or not they join Russia. Now, whether you think that the election is legitimate or not, whether you think it's you know fishy or rigged or whatever, Everyone agrees that the outcome of the referenda will be uh, a, in favor of joining Russia. And so that means that, you know, if they're doing this, you can pretty well surmise that they ran this by the Russian government first and that probably, you know, the Kremlin has been waiting and telling them, hey, do, you know, don't hold your referenda yet. Um, hold it, you know, when we give you the signal. And so the Kremlin has given these four oblasts the signal that now is the time for them to officially uh, become a part of Russia. And so once that happens, that will be um, an escalation in the war because this will go from Russia fighting a war to defend an ally to Russia fighting a war to defend itself in its own eyes. You know, this is a change on paper. Now, we look at it in reality. The Ruskies were at war with Ukraine last week. They're going to be at war with Ukraine next week. What's the difference? The difference, I think, um, comes in how Russia is going to not only talk about the war, it's not going to be the optics, but the because of the change in optics, that's going to change how they're going to fight. In short, they're going to get tougher. They're going to probably bring in more troops, and they are going to harden up uh, their new borders. And who knows, they might even expand further. We don't know that for a fact. Um, I don't think that it is out of the question at this point. Um, but at the very least, uh, the Ruskies have their land bridge to Crimea, which I'm sure they wanted, but they don't have their land bridge. And I always put that in scare quotes um, because, you know, we here in Realville call a land bridge a road. And so they have their land bridge to Crimea, but no land bridge uh, to, uh, what is it, Transnistria. And they also uh, don't have possession of Odessa, which um, is considered by the Ruskies to be, you know, a historically important Russian city. And uh, apparently in Russian culture, Odessa, you know, has a lot of significance. So they probably will want Odessa too at some point, but at the very least, they're going to stake their claim and say these four oblasts, as of now, are 100% Russia. And so therefore, sure, they could still keep launching incursions into Ukraine, but they're not going to think of where they're fighting now as incursions into Ukraine. They could you know, make further um, advancements, but for now, I guess they're primarily going to be um, focused on kicking all the Yuknats out of uh, these four places. Which, let's be honest, they have been anyway. This is where they've been fighting the most. But again, I, I, don't, I don't buy these people who say that the Ruskies 
are out of ammunition, which we've been hearing since March, that the Ruskies are out of soldiers, all their soldiers are dead, um, they're all been killed in action, and the, 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 the conscripts are about to revolt just like they did, you know, in Russia in World War I, and they're saying, we're tired of this, down with the Tsar, um, uh, up with Lenin. I don't think that Vladimir Lenin is uh, waiting in Switzerland, waiting in the wings to board his train um, and uh, swoop in and take over the Kremlin from Vladimir Putin. And so I do think that the Ruskies still have more muscle to flex. And frankly, you know, if they don't, if they really are losing that bad, um, you know, that would be, I mean, that would be kind of a good thing, you know, um, from an American perspective, because then we could be certain that we would never have to worry about r the Russian military ever, if they're so pathetic that they couldn't knock over a tin pot uh, like Ukraine. At this stage, though, I think it's naive. I, I think that it is most likely that the Ruskies have been holding back. And no, I don't think that they're, that, that, that they're going to use tactical nuclear weapons, as President Biden has repeatedly asserted. So, I don't think that the Ruskies are doing this as a last-ditch effort. If the Ruskies were truly on the ropes... The last thing they'd want to do would stick their necks out and say, you see all this territory that we've been fighting with Ukraine over, haggling over, making, you know, little advancements here over the last few months. We're just going to say it's all ours now. Well, then they look even dumber when they get pushed back. It would look bad enough. It would make you look weak enough as a country if you invade a smaller nation and they're able to push you out and they're able to repel your invasion. That already makes you look weak as a military. But if you invade that country, put your boots on the ground there, plant your flag and say, this is ours now. And then after all that, they push you back. You look even worse. That would be a political disaster uh, for the Russian government. Uh, and I mean, domestically, it would be a disaster for them. So to me, if they're doing this, that means that the Ruskies are confident um, that uh, in, at least in these four oblasts, they're going to have solid control and that it, they're defensible and that they are going to completely uh, clean the Ukrainians out of there for good. So I don't think we're near the end of the war, um, but I think we are certainly in the next stage of the war. And uh, other people who, I guess, know more about how, I guess, the politics of Russian um, declarations of war works, you know, we here in the U.S., um, have not declared war on any country since uh, 1945, and I believe it was Germany was the last one, because um, they, you know, declared war in Japan first. And we have all of these silly different names that we use to uh, euphemisms for wars, you know, police actions, uh, overseas contingency operations. Um, you know, authorization to use of military force. We, you know, we have everything under the sun except for declarations of war. And Putin has done a similar thing in this war. You know, he has called it the special military operation. Doesn't want to dignify Ukraine with de by declaring war on them. Well, if the Ukrainian, if Russia declares this territory, um, from what I understand, parts of which of these oblasts are still held by the Ukrainians. So Russia does not have, I should have said that at the beginning, Russia does not have 100% control as it stands right now over these four oblasts. Um, parts of them, I believe, are still in uh, Ukrainian hands. And if so, if the Ruskies then declare that uh, they consider these four oblasts to be Russian sovereign territory, then the towns that are still held by Ukraine um, will be considered occupied territories and the Ruskies will treat you the Ukrainians as an invading army to be repelled from Re see how they flip the script here it's nonsense obviously it's um but nevertheless I think that it would be a very good opportunity politically uh for Putin to upgrade you know what he calls his special military operation to what it's always been which is a war 
Um, it is a good excuse to declare war on Ukraine if in your, you know, in, in your domestic political uh, speak, they are occupying Russian sovereign territory and have invaded you. You know, that's how they turn around. We're going to repel the Ukrainian invaders. So we must declare war on Ukraine. And maybe there are even uh, legal reasons for this. Maybe uh, an official declaration of war would grant, uh, you know, Putin greater use of the Russian military. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know how Russian law works. And once Russia has declared war on Ukraine, um, and they get more aggressive, then we might see them move more rapidly. Um, maybe we then, you know, you see them move into Odessa. Maybe then, you know, they try and go back to Kharkov, though I, after leaving, I doubt they'll go back for a while, um, if at all. I mean, I don't know if the Ruskies really want Kharkov. I think they do. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no Kremlin whisperer. So things will probably get more interesting in the Ukraine war. There's been a lull for a while. It hasn't been that fun to talk about or even listen to. I mean, I've been following it um, through the Duran, you know, as much as I can, even if I don't talk about it on this channel, because I do want to know what's going on in case there is something that comes up. Um, this news, however, was, you know, so big that it may, you know, it, it, it even broke through sort of the mainstream um you know, blood-brain barrier, and I encountered it, you know, in normal news. So, anyway, with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.